Hello, God bless from Up Ministries. It's me, Dick Jr. I'm coming to you today to read you 2 Kings chapter 5. Now, I prayed and I asked God to help me to speak with you before I started this video. And I suggest that you pray also before you place yourself in God's Word. And that you ask Him for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding specifically. And He's going to give them to you, especially concerning His Word, because He doesn't want us to be in the dark. Um, but I also suggest that you take other things to Him in prayer. Uh, anything, really. Not just the bad stuff, though. Take the good stuff. Start off thanking Him for your food, thanking Him for your paycheck, thanking Him for all these things that He gives you, because He could take them away at any time. That's what God is. You see, He gives and takes away. But He doesn't do things to us to be malicious. That's a fact. God does not want us to suffer. Okay? Anyway, so, um, I cannot tell you how those prayers are going to come out, like the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But I can tell you this, that God is a prayer answering God. How do I know that? Because I have seen God answer prayers in my own life uh, with my health. Okay, I, you know, I, I had stage four cancer. I still have stage four cancer. I'm still going since 2018. There's that. But I've seen it in other people's lives, other people's prayers with my own eyes. I've seen many things, but I've also seen things go unanswered. So do I know which ones he's going to answer and which ones he isn't? No, I don't. And that's where it comes in, where it says in the Bible in, in that if you ask, ask not, receive not is what it says in the short form. Ask not, receive not. If you don't ask him, if you don't talk to him, you're not going to receive it in, as an answer to prayer, okay? So those things being said, you know, just go ahead and try prayer and see. You might just get some of your prayers answered, all right? Uh, I do want to say one thing, though. Go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. I always say that every video, and I feel bad for not saying it, but there's a prayer right there by Paul for the church at Ephesia. Okay, so uh, those things being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. In five, it's about six, or about uh, four columns long. It's not too bad. So, now Naaman, the captain of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man with his master and highly respected because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man was also a valiant warrior, but he was a leper. Now the Armenes had gone out in bands and had taken captive a little girl from the land of Israel, she waited on Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, then he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus spoke the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Aram said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. He departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand shekels of gold and ten changes of clothes. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, And now, as this letter comes to you, behold, I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man is sending word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? But consider now and see how he is seeking a quarrel against me. It happened when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent word to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Now let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariots, and stood at the doorway of the house of Elisha. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you will be clean. I circled, go wash in the Jordan, and you will be clean, or, or you will be clean, uh, because that's what John the Baptist was doing. He was bathing them in the river of Jordan, uh, to clean them from their sins, though. You see what I mean? So, but Naaman was furious and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hands over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Then his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, had the prophet told you to do some great thing, would you have not done it? 
how much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. <laughs> Sorry. When he turned to the man of God, when he returned to the man of God with all his company, he came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. So please take a present from your servant now. But he said, As the Lord lives, before whom I stand, I will take nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Naaman said, If not, please let your servant at least be given two mule, mules load of earth. For your servant will no longer offer burnt offerings, nor will he sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. In this matter, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the house of Rimon, his worship to worship there and he leans on my hand and i bow myself in the house of Ramon. when i bow myself in the house of Ramon, the lord pardon your servant in this matter he said to him go in peace so he departed from him some distance but gahazi the servant of elisha the man of god thought behold my master has spared this naaman the armin by not receiving from his hand what he brought as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw one running after him, he came down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? He said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give me a talent of silver and two changes of clothes. Naaman said, Be pleased to take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags uh, with two changes of clothes and gave them to two of his servants and they carried them before him. When he came to the hill, he took them from their hand and deposited them in the house and he sent the men away and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master and Elisha said to him, Where have you been, Gehazi? He said, Your servant went nowhere. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the men turned from his chariot to meet you? Is it a time to receive money and to receive clothes and olive groves and vineyards? and sheep, and oxen, and male, and female servants. Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. So he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. And uh, that's all I have for Second Kings uh, chapter 5. But as we go through here, you know, uh, he's doing, again, Elisha is doing things that Jesus did, like healing lepers, okay? Uh, and... He's not taking anything for it. You see what I mean? And this goes to the words of Jesus later on when he's in his ministry and he's sending out his apostles as well. These things, many of these things come up again. Uh, the healings and the fact that you should take nothing. Okay. So those things being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Just thanks for listening and uh, God bless.